evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. This is the East Aurora Union Free School District regular Board of Education meeting. I'm going to ask y'all to join me uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion to enter executive session to discuss the superintendent's annual evaluation. So moved. By Jessica, second. Okay. Seconded by Kim Daniel. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Carry aye. 6 0. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for bearing with us. I apologize. We're running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, the board is returning from an executive session where we discuss the superintendent's annual evaluation. Mr. Uh, Lincoln, you have that table to see this? And no initial items requiring board action, but we're on to my favorite meeting of the year, which is superintendent's comments for the superintendent's art collection. Yes, uh, yeah, today's a, a very special day. Um, this, this time of year is, is always nice because we get to celebrate uh, achievements um, over the the last few board meetings of the year, and today is the superintendent's art collection. And as you can see in this building, the park building at the high school, uh, the art collection has been collected for many decades, and it's getting quite large. And this year we have um, four exceptional editions, and that's what we're here to celebrate today. So with us we have um, Madeline Griffin, Laura, and Geneva. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ben Ostrom. For those that don't know me, uh, Mr. Van Ostrom, I teach uh, art up at the high school, and I'm also the art department curriculum coordinator. And I get the, uh, the honor of uh, speaking to you tonight. So the superintendent's art collection uh, does get uh, hung up in the uh, in the halls, and the way that it comes about is each art teacher in the district gets to recommend one student, one student's artwork uh, for inclusion in the collection. And so I'll be presenting those to you tonight. And I have prepared statements from the other art teachers. It's a little different here with our, uh, our current social distancing. Uh, uh, so for the board members that have seen these before, uh, we are doing things a little bit different tonight. All right, so first up, start at Parkdale. So Ms. White is, uh, I'll clear this up. Ms. White is incredibly proud of this year's student from Parkdale. Madeline Dory is in second grade, but you would never know that by looking at her artwork. In our remote art classes, Madeline has shared many photos. Every picture that she has made has been outstanding. Time and time again, she has shown great attention to detail and the ability to follow along with key concepts in the lesson. Her dedication, craftsmanship, and care is always clearly evident. Madeline's winter activity scene, inspired by folk artist Grandma Moses and Marie Robertson, was the perfect choice for the superintendent's art collection. She added her own twist on the lesson by incorporating things we had learned in the previous classes, such as drawing polar bears and penguins. Madeline really focused on the goal of showing many different outdoor activities. I offer her my sincerest congratulations and look forward to her next masterpiece. first year at the middle school and he has really excelled in the art room. Griffin is a very creative student who always strives to do his best. If extra time is required, Griffin does not hesitate to take work home. During our Zentangle unit, he created this amazing turtle drawing and completed it with craftsmanship and creativity. Great job. My selection is from Laura Gialanza. It's a piece created for a visual pun assignment. The characters of the ink drawing are suitcases showing various emotions. Emotional baggage. 
She has used a blending of ink techniques such as hatching and cross hatching, as well as a slight trace of colored pencils to bring this scene to life. Laura is a freshman this year taking studio and art. She shows great promise for further artwork successes. Mr. Kegler writes, it is a pleasure to present my student choice for this year's Super Intense collection from my high school classes. Geneva Green is a hardworking creative individual who always pushes her concepts and technical skills resulting in captivating visual solutions. Her acrylic and watercolor painting entitled Fruition explores the joy and benefits of quality food that is produced locally on small farms and how their consumption affects people. This is especially relevant in today's food culture of mass production, where quality is often sacrificed for maximum production. Geneva intends to relocate to Oakland, California when she graduates, where she will work on her art career and potentially explore an art therapy major. <laughs> on a side note, Geneva is also in my ceramics class, including some amazing series of plates with faces on them. So these are our selections and our additions to this year's Super Intense collection. And I hand it over to Mr. Ross. Disappointed, usually we have cake now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad to grateful that everybody could be here today. Um, I know it's, uh, it's a, a little different than we normally do. It's easier in the past to move around and to talk with parents and, and kind of to share in the moment. But we are glad that we were able to come back uh, a couple weeks ago for our first board meeting. I'm glad to be here today uh, to celebrate with you. Again, uh, the artwork was just exceptional. Uh, every year, I, I'll be honest, I'm kind of blown away with the talent of our students and always very honored uh, to add my uh, works to, to the Superintendent's collection. So again, congratulations to all of you. You know, Rich, just on behalf of the board, extend congratulations as well. We, we love this time of year and, and it's been hard um, being remote for so much of this year. We're back in person, I was excited that we were going to be able to have you and, and Hopefully you help, you know, like you can come and attend and some employees to see you tonight. I do miss seeing the artwork in person, but we were able to capture, I think, the essence of everything up on that screen. So congratulations and kudos to you all. I welcome you back to the district as you get on in years when you come back to East Rock. If you walk the halls, you'll see the artwork of the, the superintendent's collection is displayed in all three buildings. Ask somebody where your piece is going to hang and you'll be able to come back years from now and it will be there. So. 
Um, congratulations to you all. It's really quite an accomplishment to be selected as the four students and four recipients this year of that honor. And we, we congratulate you wholeheartedly and we welcome you back when you when you come up the four up there. Congratulations. Board presidents, board members, uh, comments, and committee reports. Well, I have to say we are aware of a vacancy on the Board of Education as a result of this vote. Just hang out one second. All right, uh, we have a vacancy on the Board of Education as a result of um, Mr. Segetti's changing his residence outside of the East Aurora Canyon Preschool District. Um, I'm told by our attorneys that the board has 90 days in which to um, appoint someone to serve that in that seat or hold a special election to fill out the remainder of that term. Um, I intend, because it wasn't on for tonight, we have other matters on this evening, we're going to put it on. To the June meeting for the board to discuss. Um, and so I ask you to give some consideration and some thought around that, and we'll discuss it in greater detail. Um, and that's all I have this evening. Jessica? I'd just like to say thank you to the superintendent and his team for setting us up in this room. It feels just a tiny bit like coming home. So thank you. It's really nice to be back in person in this manner. Yeah. There is another thing I wanted to mention um, is we had a safety meeting. Uh, we can have to go or so. And the last safety meeting we talked about um, being in dire need of new AEDs. And because of that, sorry, I need of what? AEDs. Because of that, we are we have now purchased um, 11 new ones that they ordered. So um, we're just waiting for the arrival. I'm not sure if we're here yet, but we've ordered 11 new ones. So then we should be um, in good shape with the AEDs. I just want to mention, I, I've noticed the banners going out for the seniors, and I just love that. I hope that's a tradition that needs to stay. It's, it honors them, but it, it's it's just fun. You just drive down Main Street slowly. It's just neat. I love it. Thanks, Katie. Um, just a couple other things. Um, I was also at the safety committee meeting with Gary um, and building and grounds. They said that we did have our annual fire inspection and everything went well at the fire inspection. And um, I think that was the main thing. The only other thing I was going to say is I guess there was some discussion about making a curb cut out here at Maine, so, but that is not going to go forward according to um, the highway department. The, uh, the nursing department um, uh, I guess was here. Um, and um, drawn some, some bump outs around <coughs> our corner right here at Road, North Road and Main. So uh, Doug came to see me and he said, All right, I had to bump out the, the curve and that brown. It's like, hey, what's going on? He walked out and talked to the gentleman and said, You know, right now we're, we're ready to cut the street without telling us. So usually they inform us what we want to And I said, You can't do that because the bus is going to be So your kids out of the building, so we can't do it today. So, we got very graciously stopped, and, and um, so we proceeded to, to contact uh, uh, the department and talk to them about how much that will impede our ability to move our buses through that area. And so they decided to pull back and not. You can see if they were doing it in front of CVS. Right. Yeah. So they they've been doing it at different corners. Ours was selected for some reason. I think it's just the overflow, the general flow of traffic from one end of the coast to another. Also, uh, our 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 corners were, were selected by CVS. Okay. It would be very difficult, it's almost impossible to get around the bump out. So we are, we have to speak with Marnie and she said, I don't know how we did it, but they agreed to stop. So, so that's because usually once they have something in motion, it, it, it's hard to stop it. Well, they're, they're putting, a, the, those places where it is all dug up, they're putting a bump out. Yeah, what, yeah, what they're doing is they're extending the yeah, I know what that is. It was intended when they originally reached the main street, they got a bunch of those in yeah. line, but for some reason thought better of it. So I don't know if back at that. It shortens the distance for people to walk across the street. So it does. Yes. But it puts them out in traffic. You know, the only thing that they're, when they're standing at the end of that bump out, they're literally in a traffic lane. Well, parking lane, but it's the kind of lane that people scoot around and get around. Them. 
especially with all the kids want Thank you. Uh, a couple things. I, I'm going to have to look back. I remember the first superintendent's art collection, which I think was 50 years ago. It may have been, this may be the 50th year, because it was in the 70s. It was when I was assistant principal. And, and I remember we, we, we gathered all a couple of years worth of the collection and took them to the uh, school board convention. Uh, one year and uh, displayed and it was, it was really quite successful but I think um, it would be neat to find out maybe do get some volunteers and do a, a cataloging of these various uh, telling where they are and what year they're from and the name of the students they're all marked so it would be fun to do that I might volunteer to help do that <laughs> yeah. were they originally done at a board meeting when they Yes. Because all the minutes would have at least all of those recipients. Yes. Go around and see which ones. And they had more. The earlier years, they they did more than one per teacher per couple. So there are a lot of them around. They're, they're just all over the place. But I remember a couple of the original, the first year, and and, and I've seen them recently. So I I can I, and I and those plates had the data. On them. So I'm I'm going to go back and look. We need to celebrate the 50th year. Some of that original work was the original work. I think it was. Oh, it was all the original. I've been on the board that they changed and started doing prints for us and letting students take their original pieces back. That. that was a little controversial because you had to convince the students to give up their their piece of work. But, but that's what artists do. I mean, they, they do art and then it, it goes for others to see, uh, hanging in a gallery or. Or sold to a collector, so they, so it wasn't really hard to convince them that that it could be preserved better by doing this than by keeping it themselves at home. Right. So so yes, I think the first 30, 40 years it was all of the original. So at any rate, that's that's a, a history. Uh, the other thing that happened more recently is I attended a uh, uh, virtual session on reviewing the UPK curriculum, and I was pleased to see the uh, involvement. Of a number of people in uh, in re reviewing that curriculum, it looks to be very ambitious and very thorough. And of course, the state of New York has these these amazingly long lists of things for four-year-olds to do. Uh, I, I think accomplish uh, a, a fraction of that list will have done a great job. Uh, so, so I don't see it as an all-inclusive kind of thing, but it but it is neat to, to have it written down and to see what the expectations are for uh, uh, pre-kindergarten that, that those kids will get. Uh, on that same subject, I would like the board to consider the possibility of providing transportation for the students who are enrolled in this program. The current description for the program indicates that parents are responsible for transportation. That works great for parents who have cars and who have time and who can do the transporting. Uh, I did a little research and I found that the Holland School District, their neighbor, allows the four year old to get on the school bus because the bus is, goes right by their house, picking up a five year old over here and a four year old over here. So I'd like the board to think about I noticed Pembroke schools, Buffalo schools all provide transportation, but most UPK programs do not because it's not included in the grant. So any additional costs associated with it. Have to be borne by the students. So, so it's something to think about, and I would recommend, in particular, I'm concerned about parents living in rural areas who are living in poverty. Uh, they often do not have a car, or if they do have the car, it has to be used to go to work. Uh, it's difficult for them to get anywhere uh, to maintain a job or to shop or to go to the doctor. So taking a child to UPK is just one more challenge that is hard for people living in poverty to overcome. So, so if we can help with that uh, without doing any major damage to the school budget, I, I would encourage us to do so. You know, as I, you mentioned that, Dan, when we're talking about 54 students in the university curriculum, it's a 
doesn't have an average for like three kids of foster would think that our present transportation might be able to absorb it without it being an additional. It's worth studying to see if that was the case. And, and we can ask Collins how they're doing it and what they yeah. uh, so as we did a, a full universal pre-k where it would be you know an access of a hundred or hundred and twenty kids I could see where maybe that might be some added cost but this initial this initial um, I don't disagree with your sentiment. Yeah, um, Cindy was uh, just looking into it, and so she's going to talk a little bit about it during her comments. Uh, just she checked uh, in, 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 in the uh, Yeah, there's just a few things that we have to work through um, once we get the RFPs returned. Great. So she'll explain that later. Well, I'm moving on to administrative comments. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen It's interesting, Dan, that you mentioned Pembroke because that's the district that I was at. Temporarily, oh, right, right? Back to East Aurora. Yeah. yeah. So, and yes, yeah, September we did bus our UPK students. Um, the difference was, well, not the difference, it's just we don't really have the parameters of what our UPK is going to look like yet. But ours was housed in district within our building, and it was the same hours as the primary school's hours. So the students were just picked up with all of the other students on the bus runs, and we also had our own transportation department. So. That's why Pembroke was able to provide transportation for UPK. Yeah. But it is something that we've talked about and we're definitely going to look at. I think some of the hurdles at this point, and I should even refer to them as hurdles, but some of the um, things that we have to determine is when we get the RFPs in, first we have to determine how the program is going to run, whether it's going to be run in district, what the hours of the program are going to be run, whether it's going to be run at a community-based preschool, and the hours that they set. So once we have the RFPs in, then we can make some of those decisions. That's when I think we'll be in a better position to look at the busing situation. Thank you. So. you know, and I know several districts have that have multiple UPK classes. Sometimes have one in one location and one in another. Uh, the apparently the Holland program they used to have two. I don't know whether they still do, but but, sure. they, but at any rate, at least one of their classrooms is located. At their elementary school, and uh, you know, and I don't even know if it's if, if what the legalities are, but you know, if, if we did run one classroom at Parkdale and and one at another location or two at another location, I wonder if the children, the parents who needed transportation, could be located in the Parkdale classroom. That's something that's, I would have to, yeah, that's yeah, something I would have to check into because I think that's sort of selective, and I know everything has to be lottery and. Oh, so even okay. where they end up in being assigned is a lottery, not just whether yes. they're qualified. Yeah, even where they're assigned is a lottery yeah. um, from the other districts that I've spoken to. So, but That's very interesting, you know, because everything else we do, we do on an individualized need basis. I know. Uh, what else do we do in the public schools where we do a lottery to determine your qualifications for participating in a program? Yeah, I'm going to Board members are missing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of going on down there. <laughs> but I just to finish up with UPK, there's definitely been interest and excitement about it. As of this afternoon, when I checked, we had 48 families that had registered their children, and we just opened registration on Friday afternoon. So when they're registering right now, they're being told the transportation is not being provided. Correct. And so before we close registration. I'm hoping we'll have an answer to that question as to whether transportation will Well, be we should because we actually are requiring the RFPs to be back on June 11th, and then we're having that board meeting on the 18th to um, approve the proposal. Okay. And registration ends on the 18th, and the lottery will be the following week. So we hopefully we should be able to have that information. I'd like to at least have it in time that we can get out to folks that that might not have the ability for transportation, yeah. that they can actually participate in it because we can provide transportation, right? That they, they need a, a time for them to be able to register when they know the transportation for the program is available. So, okay, so we could look at extending that yeah. registration period beyond the 18th okay. for parents to register their children. Um, yeah, right. And then, and then really sort of, advertise the change when it, if it happens. Okay. Do we know if anyone has 
called to register found out that that there is not transportation and then said, oh, I can't do this. Do you have any information about that? Jen is the registrar and she's the one who's been fielding all of the emails and the calls. Um, she has not relayed that to me, but I will check with her. Yeah, just so sure. that if there is someone, we make sure that they're aware of it. Yep. Thank you. And it's pretty much it. We're also moving along. We're really, at this point, the next stage of it, now that we have the registration process up and running, is thinking about the lottery. I have been fielding questions from a couple of the community nursery schools about the program that they said that they're definitely interested in submitting a proposal. Um, so I'm just trying to help them through that process. Also, there's questions about insurance and things like that, and providing meals because all of those things are required with a full day program. So we have interest from families, we have interest from community organizations. Thanks for your hard work on that. Thank you. It's a lot of work. Thank you. Mr. Ready, do you have anything for comments? Uh, I do. I'm not going to spin the camera around to my own face because I'll be huge. But um, yes, uh, no, good. Uh, to uh, tomorrow, we are hosting a uh, COVID vaccine clinic uh, here in our uh, live, uh, library, our cafeteria, like we have in the past. The interesting part of this one, it's open to anyone 12 and up. Uh, and uh, we have 229 people uh, that will be joining us uh, tomorrow uh, to get their first shot of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, and those are everywhere from 12 years old and up. So our last time when we did it for faculty and staff, we had 100 people. Uh, and now we're at 229. So solely in our cafeteria, uh, 329 uh, will have been vaccinated. So just a great partnership um, and, and everything we're doing to kind of build community immunity and, and hopefully get back to normal. We did, but they have to um, prep it. So if someone is interested, um, they can email the reopen at EAK12 and we can get you on. Um, they just need to make sure they bring enough, but they don't waste any. So, um, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Are we I have a couple of things. Um, yes. Um, I'll try to project my voice. My voice. <laughs> On um, this week, um, Comptroller DiNapoli announced that the April 2021 sales tax revenue throughout the state is up by 45.7% 40, over last April. Now, we have to consider last <laughs> April, but he, he also looked back to April of 2019 and it's still up over that by 10.2%, which is $137 million. So that's good news, which will impact our final quarter of sales tax. Um, also, in concert with Cindy, we've been working on, on unpacking the federal stimulus programs. And there are two programs, the CRRSA Act, and that one is set to be on uh, the application to be completed by June 15th. Um, and we're still working on that. And we'll be able to report on that at the next board meeting on June 9th. Um, and that one does not require um, community input. The other piece is called the ARP Act. And that one is going to require community input. So we're working on a survey and that will have to be posted on our website by July 1st. So we'll be gathering information and hopefully at the next meeting, we'll be able to report back on both of these as to where we're at. Can you involve the board in that process? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course. I mean, both of them, but in particular, I think they're Interested yes. And it has to include teachers, so not just like right. parents, but not just parents, yes. teachers, faculty, right. staff, board, right. you know, all stakeholders. No, I think you did. Okay. <laughs> Do either of those plans require board approval prior to submission? No, no. Either one. If they're very similar to the ESSA grant application, it's done through the same portal and it's submitted. Um, Brian submits it. Well, I would just point out to the board that it's uh, it's over a million dollars. So I think you do need to 
to exercise some uh, some uh, oversight. Uh, oversight with regard to how it's spent. Um, the only other thing I would add is this application process is it's a really tight timeline, and we can amend it after we file it. But I think it's important to hit our filing date, and then as things unfold and as we get more information, we can always go back and amend it. Do you anticipate having any information that we could look at at the, at the new meeting? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we met today and um, we're working on this first application. And we'd, like we get, yeah. <laughs> and we'd like to get the survey out to get that input because that has to be posted on our website by July 1st. So we don't want to wait until right yeah, yeah until right. whatever so we were talking earlier about just doing like a thought exchange type right. um, survey where people can add comments and you know sort of rate their highest priorities and that could be sent out to community members board members faculty staff everybody so we'd like to get that very soon yes it's all done. okay sounds good and that's all i get I don't have anything. We're on our third week of in-person instruction and it becomes a little more normal every day, as close as we can get, and everything's great. They're finding their way around the building okay? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The kindergarten, they come on little tours before they came back and they walk them to all their specials anyway. But um, yeah, they're picking right back up where they left off last uh, March. Yeah. yeah. Thursday's Hawaiian Day. Yes, that's their next Thursday's Hawaiian Day. So, so what does that mean? Means Mr. Lybrox gonna wear a pineapple suit. <laughs> we have a spirit day at the last Friday of every month, so this month is Hawaiian. Can't wait. No, but everything's great. This is Yeah. Mr. Lybrox, anything? I I do have something. <laughs> That, that isn't a lie. Oh. <laughs> uh, so back in March, I reported to you that we had a visit from Maple Joe, and they tapped our, our trees at Parkdale, and they submitted that um, the maple syrup. They, they took the maple water, boiled it down, and Sam. submitted Sam. it. Sam. Uh, Sam. Oh, Sam. Well, Sam. Maple, <laughs> maple water. Sam. Okay. I don't know about that. Okay. So we took the um, and they submitted it to the Cornell, they call it the Schoolyard Sugaring Maple Contest. So the, the, the stipulation is the, the trees that they tap have to come from school property. So uh, a bunch of schools throughout the state had, had submitted it, and I am happy to report that Parkdale took first place in the elementary <laughs> division. <laughs> We need a little extra security around our trees from now on. You know, that, that's a good step. So, uh, but, so with that, we uh, received $250 as, as a prize. So uh, we've been discussing this, and our, our goal is to purchase another maple tree to, to plant in the oh, yeah. area there. So one of the maple trees, um, unfortunately, um, you know, is, is there, but it's not blossoming with leaves this, this spring. So um, eventually, I'm sure that'll have to come down, but we would like to plant another one out there so that we can continue this tradition. Is that the one that the staff came from? No, no, not that one. Unfortunately, that didn't produce any. So, um, so but uh, and, and big thanks to uh, Ms. Powell, who coordinated all this and, and started it from, uh, or got it going from start to finish. Did it work in science lesson or did you kind of do it? That would be cool. I, I wasn't there, the, I know the classes went out and they watched how there was tap, but the actual process of doing the boiling was done off site. Um, so, but I know in the middle school, we've had some field trips to the, uh, some. Yeah, she, uh, her family owns a maple farm out in Wyoming County, so I believe her father and a family friend came and did a little mini lesson um, for the kids when they kept the trees. So. Did you they taste it later? Yeah. Uh, they did. They had they made pancakes. Oh, and they had maple syrup on their pancakes. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure, just very brief. Uh, we are having our spirit week this week and next week. Um, we originally planned it for two weeks with the hybrid, so now we have half hybrid, half full of person next week, so that's exciting. Um, but a few of the things that we have going on, uh, we're having a mask design contest where the students are able to design masks, and then um, a survey went out to all students today where they can vote until the end of the week, and then the winners um, we are going to be able to, students will be able to purchase them. So, 
Um, and we have a, a nice high quality, you know, master a little bit more comfortable. So we're hoping that those are in before the end of the school year. We believe they will be, uh, but that's, that process is running. And it, just a lot of, uh, in June I'll be able to share more, but a lot of end of the year activities are in the mix of being um, designed. Um, so we're excited about making sure that every student um, has a chance to do something really fun at the end of the school year. Uh, you know, so we can have that, that chance to just kind of sigh and, and celebrate getting through uh, this good fall year together and then also create some closure to this year um, as we look forward you know, to the future. And the only other thing I wanted to add was just um, the, the past two weeks, I spent a lot of time in interviews, physical education interviews, special ed interviews. Jessica and I today started screening for the over 200 and some applicants for um, the elementary physicians. And it's, it's time consuming, but every year that I do it, I, I just get more and more excited because the quality of candidates that we have are just absolutely incredible. Um, so these days are, are jam packed and by the end we're exhausted, but it's good when you walk out of there knowing um, that yes, we are losing some really good people to retirement, really good people, um, but it's all so exciting because there's some pretty incredible um, you know, innovative ideas and, and diversity and, and some things that we'll be reading on board eventually. So that's a little anecdotal that I'm pretty excited about that. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Brown, we know we have a mini last, mini last, winning hat. There we go. <laughs> mini um, can't talk <laughs> uh, Will it be available for purchase to the broader community and other schools? I'll be honest with you, we have not discussed that yet. So that is something that I will bring back. If I was so a little that's a good idea. in a high school in like 49 yeah. design, yeah. I'd feel, feel pretty cool. That's a very good idea. I'll make you know that. Yeah, thank you. And the board. And the board. <laughs> 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 I want to buy a map. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, nothing like Robert? Just a few things. I uh, wanted to thank John Heisner, who's our student government advisor and student government executive board. Last Friday night, they uh, organized the first ever ultimate. Frisbee Championship at East Aurora High School. So we had over 60 kids sign up, uh, grades 9 through 12, competing on a beautiful Friday night on the turf. So um, another example of something that will become a tradition um, through, uh, through the creativity of our student government. And then if you are looking for things to do, I have some options. So our Chamber of Commerce Students of Excellence will be um, honored through a television program this year. And it's uh, Channel 5, WVBZ TV. And that's airing tomorrow night at 9 p.m. It's a little late for me. Uh, and then Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 7.30 so I know Mr. Russ was disappointed that we couldn't do this in person this year, um, but Gary Grove and the Chamber have uh, coordinated uh, what I think will be a, a, a wonderful program of interviews with our students. Uh, and uh, a celebrity to my right, Mr. Moore, is also speaking. Can't wait to see that. Uh, but a nice way to honor these 10 students from East Aurora High School plus three East Aurora High School students will be honored through their participation at the board. What are those call letters again? Uh, w B B Z. W B B B Z. Double B. Double B. So W B B B Z. Yep. Channel Thank five. You. It might be sixty-seven on antenna. Okay. <laughs> I think it's six antenna channel sixty-seven. If they don't have you. Cord cutters. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, uh, the the last advertisement again, if looking for something to do this Friday night, we are hosting our talent show uh, live in our auditorium, and we have a number of uh, uh, student acts um, from comedy to to singing to all kinds of acts of creativity. And again, the celebrity sitting two to my right uh, will be performing. I had to break it to him that he's not in the competition. He's the filler as the judges are tallying mm -hmm. their scores. In a pineapple suit? No, no pineapple, pineapple suit. suit. That, <laughs> I should have considered that. Uh, <laughs> so Travis, will, Travis is quite a musician. He's going to be uh, performing as well. So, we're looking forward to that. so that's Friday night. You should practice that for us. Uh, no guitar. Sorry. I will. So I forgot to bring my phone tonight, but I promise.
promise not to bring it on Friday night. I will tape it in the next board meeting. Maybe, uh -oh. maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> we'll have another report. <laughs> Yeah, the only other uh, super exciting event is rem reminded to me because Ms. Nudek is here. The freshmen and sophomores are going to be having an activity night next Wednesday. Um, so we're just really trying to get as much community as we can in these crazy times. And so that's going to be open to our freshmen and sophomores and towards that event as well. But otherwise, no news for me. Thank you. Uh, visitor comments. Anyone who wants to address the board this evening? Thank you all for coming. Before the discussion items, we don't have anything on, but up for items for board discussion is the update on the progress for the reopening of school full time. You um, yeah, looks like that um, slide said, um, things have parked up off to a great start. Um, I, I just sent a uh, notice out recently to our parents, uh, thanking them for helping us through that process. It was a little more complicated at, at um, Park Hill because uh, we just had to rework the schedule because we were moving from half day to full day, and then that also caused us to rework all the transportation routes, which took quite a bit of time. Uh, that way we took that extra week just to make sure that it was in place, and I'm glad we did it because it's, it's running, you know, uh, pretty much perfectly, like it always does, and you know, the kids are really excited to be back, and, and, uh, and the teachers are excited to have them here. Just talking about how they can adapt and making progress and all the good things happening at the end of the year. Uh, you know, uh, June is a really fun month at Parkdale, so a lot of activities that they'll be able to participate in. And we're allowed to do that in a little different way, like we were today, but it's still just nice to have some staff and um, being be together, socialize, and those types of things. So, yeah, there's uh, really no issues at all. It's just been pretty great. The weather's great, so the kids can go outside, they can take their lunch outside, lots of, lots of positive things. And as you know, too, we're going to be able to now come back because the positivity rate in the community has gone down between up below 100 cases per 100,000 residents, which is very positive for all of us. We did get notice about uh, being able to remove our masks starting tomorrow, but that doesn't apply in our schools. So we, we will still need to wear our masks in schools, which I think is a good thing for right now. Just let's get through the end of the year, and then we'll, we'll think about it for some time. And so, um, Yes, so but we are removing the barriers at Parkdale, and so we're going through that process right now. We're just waiting for parents to get back to it to see how many parents would like us to remove them. We're going to remove them, and then parents can say no. So, so we're just uh, going to work on this this week, and then uh, they'll be primarily removed. <laughs> um, you anticipate but, a, a, a fan of the line of No, we did it at the middle high school. No one no one took stuff on <laughs> But two, two so far. Okay, so we have two, two so far. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't think there would be a lot to most of the barriers. So we're working on that with the teachers as well. I would just reach out to those parents too to let them know that that's okay for so leaving us that way. We had their shoes a little if they wanted the teachers to wear how many there are. Yeah, so we went through that process. I contacted the uh, area county department of health myself to ask uh, Dr. Nicholas, you know, uh, what work with research was showing them. And, and, and just the research indicates that, you know, the, uh, the nature of the virus, the fact that there's more vaccination, the impact is almost. Uh, so she said it, you know, she really wanted to be safe here. So, um, yeah. about the barriers, is our, at the safety meeting, they mentioned that there are some teachers that still have requested students um, to have barriers in their classrooms. That's still the case? And will we be doing that at uh, high school as well? Do you have any at high school? No. And you don't know yet about Park Hill? Right, I'm not sure we have to discuss that a little further. Um, you know, it's different at Park Hill in the middle high school right. because the kids are in the same room all day long. Only minutes. So we're working through that. So the teachers still, the teachers still have the barriers between. Yes, they do. And, and the one thing too is, is as we move back to full classes, we went to like ten or eleven or twelve tests. It's like close to ten tests right. at Parkdale. Now there's twenty. So now instead of having ten barriers, the twenty barriers really fill up the space yeah. and it becomes pretty intrusive. And so, so we really feel just for the sake of the flow of the room. I'm removing the um, So, yeah, so really, uh, really going well. And then, um, like I said, as we all know, we can come back. We're going to come back on Monday um, uh, for the middle of high school. And so, uh, after talking with uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Roberts, we had a couple of discussions around how should we do it. And so, we decided to, um, you know, just get some feedback from kids and some parents to offer all three models. 
schools, so we're going to allow those kids who are remote to stay remote or come back to them. Um, and then the kids who um, they can either stay hybrid or come back full time. And so they're working through that process uh, right now. Yep, go ahead. I was also say we. I, I thought you were looking us for numbers. Yeah, do you yeah. have numbers? Uh, well, we asked to, them to let us know by tomorrow. Okay. Um, at this point, we have four students that will remain in the hybrid, um, and that's the entire school. And I believe we're at. I believe it was 26 remote, fully remote students. Um, of the 63 that were previously remote, I believe the number that we heard back from was 49. Um, so of those 49 that responded, 26 of them are remaining remote. The rest are going to um, join us for four days. Anybody who is hybrid hasn't gone remote? Zero. Zero. At this point. So again, we ask them, you know, tomorrow. So I anticipate tomorrow um, you know, there will be an update. But uh, I was I was very happy to see that um, most of the students will be back and that, you know, yeah. Do you have numbers on the high school? Or, or ballpark? Yep. So we uh, we have seventeen yeah. who are going to return from <coughs> remote to in person, and they're trickling in about seven uh, who want to remain hybrid. And none of the hybrid want to go home. Fascinating. I really thought they were going to say. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we yeah. just thought, you know, we played around with that having three different programs trying to get the same time in the class with those students. But um, they've been doing it so well, and, and it's just such a short period of time. You know, for some kids, the hybrid thing is really working well. They've been excited about it. It's just like it's more than remote. Some of them just go to work. They really don't care. We really want the kids back, and of course, that's what we want. Um, and I think this is what's, what's really nice about this is it just gives us kind of a trial run to get back to normal. Uh, so that when we come back in September, you know, everybody's ready to come back full time. And that's going to be our goal is in September, all students K to 12 are back with us full time. Okay. I don't know what the task is, that's what we're talking about in the task force. But, uh, yeah, so we're ready. I think, you know, it's, um, you know, we didn't have to change the schedule, you know, the schedule. So that helped. And also transportation, when we switched over from Parkdale, it also helps with the high school. So that transportation piece was less, uh, was less challenging. And so um, we, we talked to the first student, and they're pretty much ready to go. Um, we're ready to go with food service. That's the greatest challenge is finding the space we can take the lunch. So, you know, we have, we have to put them all over the place. <laughs> you know, and so we're, we're trying to find spaces where they can be six feet apart because they have to remove their masks and, and still uh, make them get safe and comfortable. Uh, so uh, they are working on that um, in the next couple of days. Have a fun last month. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, just do it. Now, as thank you to Doug and his team, they put a few tents up today. You may have seen them. Um, you know, it's definitely like you know, Joe McPike, our head custodian. Oh my gosh, that guy's amazing. Like, it, you know, just it takes everyone. You know, the secretaries, Amy and Lori, the teachers. We met today and discussed it. and. Um, I just appreciate that everyone's looking forward to it and, and yeah it's going to be a challenge transition you know every transition is a bit of a challenge um but everyone's got their head in the game and we're ready to go and we're going to end it as strong as possible you know i i, I throughout the spring we heard from a lot of folks saying you know get back get back get back and i i don't think that um, folks necessarily have an appreciation for all of the things that go into that it's not just what the kids on the bus and get on the local side it's the work that needs to happen in order for that to occur um to get the desks all back in to have that distancing for lunch to have cleaners come in and take care of sanitizing and putting up tents and, and so i applaud you all and, and all and all the staff we have on building the grounds and, and everybody else to make that work and i know it's going to be a lot this last month um Try to have some fun with the kids when they're back for the first time all together this year for that last month, and and, and try to enjoy it. I, I really sincerely mean that. Don't don't let the stress of it all become so overwhelming for your teachers or, or you guys um, that you lose the enjoyment of it. Just that you were
Hi, I'm sorry. I just remembered this. The um, Sustainability Club came down to Parkdale today. Four members with Mr. Shelley. Um, and they it was supposed to be lined up with Earth Day, but with everything going on, we got to it today. They did a little presentation for each of the fourth grade classes on um, trees and sustainability. And they gave each um, child a, uh, a pine tree. I don't know what kind it was, but of one to plant at home. So every, every fourth grader left with a tree and a little more knowledge on um, trees. <laughs> yeah, it was cute. It was great. <laughs> yeah, they put a little presentation together and they rode their bikes down. It was, it was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to thank Mr. Shelley and Mr. Prasadi with the Sustainability Committee of the High School doing a really fantastic job. They, uh, they did the Hoover Grant and Foundation Aid Foundation check on that. Um, and so the plan is to, uh, we have a uh, cash for uh, to our our trees, and so we have to replace some of them. So they come up with a plan to, to create um, what they call like a buried space. So there's different varieties of trees, so we don't get one tree and break out. So uh, looking long term, uh, they're going to be uh, redoing the front lawn. They have a plan for that, and they're going to trees right along the entryway so it's uh it's gonna be really special they both they both especially jeff it's it just a fantastic job yeah and the kids are so uh so into it you know the kids really are excited about it well another thing is that, that i can see things things have made that are long lasting and, and i'm hoping to be proud of them i feel that it's going to be something that's gonna gonna stay you know the cafeteria changes that were made last year to so this kind of stuff, I think that's going to It's great when you send you know, young kids, uh, there's some boys and girls out there, 15, 16, 17, big holes. Yeah. <laughs> they dig six or eight holes, and it's really great. One of the big things I put to me, and when we went to school, we all had our experiences and we have our memories, but I don't think we've had the opportunity to have a lasting impact. Like you just said, really incredible. Is that it on the opening? Yeah, the only other thing I wanted to tell Jeremy, any comments at all? No, as, as Mary was speaking, I, and, and the, the stressors associated with it, I, I, I couldn't help but think ever since the announcement that Brian made just yesterday, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the reaction from from the students, um, the reaction from the parents and the emails that I'm receiving, and and then the teachers, all have the same excitement to be back. It, it is just overwhelming. So so it makes the the the, the stress of it all uh, that much easier to handle because of the excitement that, that's around it. So that's all. And, and I'm just going to talk about the task force. Um, I know some the parents who are sitting on task force wanted to bring it back together, but of course, we have to see the guidance from the state. And so we really um, can't plan until we get the guidance. Um, I mean, our intention is to come back full time. And so I don't know how the guidance is going to vary from that because I think the state um, and I, I you know, the, the uh, National Teachers Association um, was uh, on the radio yesterday talking about they expect us to be back full time too as well. So I think everybody's focused in that area. Now things can happen, and of course, um, you know the, the virus can change or it could be a spike, and those things could happen. But you know, with, with vaccinations and, and the virus that we seem to be leading in terms of the positivity rates, you know, it looks really hopeful that we will uh, be able to reopen um, in the fall. Like I said, full time, but of course we are working into the backup plan. So I'll be calling the task force together uh, as soon as they get that information. Brian, uh, do, do you see uh, any role uh, for virtual learning in the long run uh, for school districts? In, in other words, you, you read about the, the fact that there may no longer be snow days, for instance, but that virtual learning is available, and why would you stop learning just because it's snowing outside? Uh, there, I'm wondering if there are other reasons, uh, or, or do you see it as, a, uh, as something that's just going to fade into obscurity because uh, we're all concentrating on getting back, or is it, uh, is it another tool in the toolbox that a teacher has to be able to uh, help students learn? Uh, there are, I assume, some students who, who learn better by remote from in 
person. I, you know, having worked with kids all my life, I know there is no one way of, of getting to a child and helping them to succeed. Every, well, every child is different. And, and I, I'm just wondering whether there's some, some uh, possibility that, that what we learned this year could improve education as we well, Yeah, in my meetings, so I'm hoping with the administrators and also with the teachers uh, in, my, in my group meetings, they are being about, we can talk about that. And, and is there some possibility? I, you know, I guess there is. I think for right now, again, what we might focus on is getting back. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. so, but how does that work? And, and one thing I was thinking about with just myself, and you know, just so you always talk about like distance learning and the idea that uh, being able to offer for schools that don't have, um, like, like as a localized program as we do, you know, like especially like in our AP for school, our science, we offer a lot of AP programs and a lot of papers and this in general. Well, we have one of the best course catalogs uh, in, in our area. So that allows us to do a lot of variety uh, within those offerings. And so for school districts that just don't have that capacity, I can see like the virtual piece would, because the technology has really come along and it, it's run a lot more smoothly because we were forced to do it over the last 15 months. So I was just thinking about that could be a possibility. I think the teachers right now are thinking, I want my kids back. Because we know ultimately that's really where they're best served. But like if you look at many college programs, Many college programs now have some type of blended piece to it. They they meet in person and then they are also online. And so there is those blended models that gosh, probably every college and university in the country by now. Um, when I was in school, and that's a long time ago, we were we were doing things like with a school in Canada, for instance, um, in like distance learning. I just just in the immediate see that we can use it for kids that need the outside they don't walk or do they need to or collect all their work or something like that or send some home and if they can participate out of their six necessarily but if they're if they're out and, and recovering and recuperating at home they really can participate in the classes virtually and, and not feel so behind when they come back in person so well even the, the children that come to school sick i mean they do it all the time uh they, they, they could be encouraged to not Stay home with their laptop and don't bring your children to school. Yeah, you know, and um, we were interviewing candidates for one of the positions. And like you said, one of the students left and went to Iraq. Iraq. And he was in school while he was in Iraq. So okay. even though he was like in the middle of the night, he would get up. We have a board member like. <laughs> 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 not for not Iraq. Yeah, not Iraq, but, but yeah. But some distance, from distance, some other distance from distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I think in general, just because the positivity rate is, is ease, <coughs> just in general, it just feels um, it just feels better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the CBC, you know, thing with the mask guys, yeah. this this it really changed things. Like, I think it's uh, a little bit more back to normal. All right. Uh, updates on the summer school program. Yeah, we're moving along on summer school. Uh, um, Matt and Travis are uh, Matt Library and Travis are. Internal and, and external, we've been able to fill the majority of the positions. 
uh, when we look at everything uh, K-12, our, our first goal is to, to fill at least one classroom in, in all the areas that, that we need to. Um, we've been able to do that at the elementary level. Um, the secondary level has been a little bit more difficult, uh, just with the interest that, that we've received both internally and, and externally. We're, we're tying up some loose ends. We're actually using the current interview process that Travis is working on this right now. Uh, of uh, you know, um, math is one of the areas that, that we've been a little uh, shy in, in interest. So uh, we're using the, the hiring at the high school to hopefully be able to get somebody in to be able to work uh, the high school um, uh, summer skills camp for that credit recovery in the area of math. Um, we have had some more interest at the elementary level uh, just because of the, the versatility of those certifications. Um, so we may be able to expand to a, a second classroom at, at the uh, elementary level. Um, at the secondary level, maybe a little more difficult just because of the interest in, in more of the specialty content areas that we need to find uh, with the interest mm -hmm. that we've seen right now. So that may be a little more difficult. So we'll be able to certainly get that initial list of students um, uh, serviced, but beyond that, uh, we'll see if we gain any more interest and, and see what kind of traction we can get through uh, through the interview process that we have. Um, the uh, the student responses, so they, they did go up K through through six. The um, uh, high school responses, as I mentioned, are, are uh, slightly delayed, but purposely delayed to see where that uh, the credit recovery is going to be needed and what we're looking for what students. Uh, so it is going to just take a little bit of time to determine what students are going to need to attend at the at the secondary level. Uh, as far as the K through six responses, on average, we're getting about half of the initial um, asks or the initial invitations to two thirds uh, is about average. As we start to get into the middle school, we're seeing a, a little bit less. At one grade level, we have one response. At, at another grade level, we have five responses. So Are you that's, following that's, up with calls to those? Parents? Yes. So, so, so I would identify because correct. So, so Friday was the deadline. Last Friday was the deadline. Um, as soon as Friday had passed, first thing Monday morning, we started making phone calls to, to all those families, and some of them had been a little indecisive on what they want to do, and for some of the reasons that Brian mentioned, that they there a lot of the questions are well, summertime we have things planned. We and, and our comment to the families is that um, you know we understand that it's summertime, and and we certainly want to encourage participation. You know, if you're going to be gone for four to five weeks, then we we ask that you reach you know. Really, if you're your, your spot and, and let someone else take that spot if, if we have the interest. Um, and then other families are going to say, well, we're gone this week, but we can make four to the five weeks. So we're working with those families to encourage them to, to go ahead and attend because we still think that, that's beneficial. So, um, so we're working with those individual families to try to help them make those decisions. We're still waiting on some responses, um, but by tomorrow, we're looking to um, go to that alternate list that we have identified for each of the grade levels and start to make calls uh, to those families. No more letters went up. Wait for that turnaround time. Uh, we're going to make those direct calls. So, what it looks like at the elementary level is that by the time we make those calls, my prediction is that we may have that, that one classroom uh, at each of the grade levels uh, for the students that we've identified. Again, just because of the uh, you know the, the level of response or that we receive or the, the interest that we receive for for the programs. Um, so, so that's where we stand right now. So, still a little bit of a work in progress, uh, but we're we're um, I had where we were last time, so we were making progress towards where we want to be, uh, just balancing that that interest from from both teaching candidates and also the, the families, and, and they want to commit to this for the summer. Okay. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about what the program is going to look like? In other words, the child comes to Parkdale or to high school, and what is their typical summer school day? Sure. So, so as you probably know, the hours are going to be 8:30 to 11:30 uh, for for the students when, when they attend on the three days a week. Um, we have been actually uh, Lisa Brown uh, uh, stopped by my office last week, and she showed some interest in, in working. And I thought, okay, well, you're, you're a second grade teacher, let's put you in the classroom. But she had a completely different idea, and I've been working with her. And for lack of a better term, um, she's going to be our our events coordinator uh, for 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 the summer. She is going to, we're, we're going to be working on a different theme each week. Um, we're going to be bringing in presenters, um, having additional activities, supplemental activities for, for the students. We initially had some, some um, uh, positions mm -hmm. slotted for the art, music, and, and phys ed, as, as we had uh, um, requested to uh, a while back. But the, the interest wasn't there internally or externally for those certified positions. 
Um, so we, we still uh, wanted to provide the students with something other than just their, their ELA and their math when they come in. So that's why um, we, we um, sat down with Lisa and, and uh, we're going to kind of infuse those concepts. Uh, it may not be direct instruction in those areas, but there's going to be um, themes around those areas that they will incorporate each week, whether it's a, each week is, is themed that, or we just have a few different days where we have, or at least try to bring in at least one outside presenter a week for those five weeks, so we'll have five different experiences, uh, but we're trying to um, tailor those so that it's uh, um, kind of grouped within uh, some sort of theme for, for that week, whether it's outdoors, uh, whether it's a recreation week for the phys ed theme, um, it may do some art and design, uh, we do have some um, uh, some staff members that have artistic backgrounds that could design some programs for those kids. So to try to break up the day for them, provide them with sometimes classroom experiences or sometimes classroom mm -hmm. over experiences as well. Thank you. I'm kind of glad there'll be something a little more than just strictly free arts academic mm -hmm. pursuits. I, I, I mean, the children are going to come in in the summer. There ought to be an element of fun associated with mm -hmm. That a lot of districts are doing uh, field trips, for instance, in the summer is a great time to do field trips to uh, historic places or, or places of interest. Uh, and just, you know, getting outside and, you know, for, I'm not opposed to helping them with their math and their, and their reading. I think those are important concepts. But, but in summer school, it ought to not feel like punishment. So I feel like um, enrichment. Uh, right. And so whatever you can do to bring that element of fun and enrichment into their lives during the week, I think can pay off in great benefit to this, especially as you, as we do this uh, in subsequent years, when children will say, oh, you know what, they had fun doing that last year. They did this and they did that, maybe outside of yeah, and, and when we work with our teachers, that, that'll be the message to them as they start to design the, the specific curriculum that they're going to present to the kids. And we almost want them to, uh, not that they don't do it right now, but we want them to maybe teach through experiences. Um, so we're, we're hoping to infuse that uh, that uh, experience-based learning uh, within the, the, the program. But also, uh, we want them to, you know, we talked about a little more specifics. We talked about maybe having that Thursday the last hour of that Thursday be that time where we have that presenter come We want the kids to look forward to that and say, hey, I can't wait till next Thursday um, and really have them excited about uh, the, the additional supplemental activities that we have. Well, I, I think the idea of theme is great. You know, there could be community service kinds of activities, you know, that uh, beautification activities, things, there's all kinds of things that kids could get involved in that would mm -hmm. make it seem less uh, like school and more, uh, more like a experience that they can Thank you. Do you have plans if so if we do end up like at the secondary level specifically for any way? Do you have a backup plan or would there be a plan for September for those folks or that's for those kids that decide that we're gonna be able to identify that may reduce additional service? Right. Either they don't come or we don't end up having the math teacher. Um yeah, so um yeah, all the way around we're gonna be providing additional um, support services in the fall. So this is just like a carryover. And so so the, the 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 purpose of this program is, is not necessarily it's more maintenance, it's just it, it's just to keep the, the concepts fresh and, 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 and so there's some some level of repetition and so kind of a support as we transition through the summer so that they're well prepared to come back in September. Then we'll be um, we'll be providing additional remedial services. Uh, based on the needs of the students, and then so we'll be hiring, and that's some of that federal money will be used to hire um, remedial specialists both in the areas of math and ELA. So, um, like now on, on, on the high school side, it's a little different because um, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really a good recovery. And so, Bill and Travis, I don't know if Travis wanted to. Yep. Come so, on. I feel very confident we'll have a high school math teacher <laughs> to help kids earn credit. Um, we also hope to have a second for the middle school math. Um, and I feel confident we'll have that as well to have skill support for middle school students who could use it during the summer. So I feel very good about where we're at in terms of staffing. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, the recovery piece is a little bit more critical because it's about them you know, proceeding forward. And so um, we've had a lot of success with that in the past. It hasn't been to this degree, um, but I think, you know, 
slow and surely uh, we will progress and we will, we will hopefully be able to prove it. And it all depends to what happens over the period of time at the end of the actual school year. Uh, the bill is set up for for that remediation intervention and require the community summer school, so it's kind of like a little bit of a barricade. If you guys can if you get it done, you don't have to come to summer school, but let's get that credit recovery taking place right now, and then you've got the summer to yourself, right? So so it's kind of a multi-tier. Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, it's serious <laughs> in, ter in terms of it's, 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 it's not just And the fall carryover, that's not going to be just for those that are in summer? No, no, no. That's for anybody. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, those those services would be identified for any of those. It's like, you know, if you have, um, you know, like, if you have a case, uh, case load right now, you know, they'll, they'll you know, evaluate those kids if they're going to come back and still need those additional services. And then they're also going to say, okay, now there's this Know they wouldn't be in remedial, but we have seen a little bit of loss. Uh, there's been you know, some other issues for this child, so we want to just provide these extra services like for anywhere from the 10 weeks, 20 weeks, it could be for the whole year. And so that's what we're going to do. And that'll come through the recommendations of the teachers and the, the specialists. And the <coughs> the available? Yep, oh, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. yeah, and counseling during the summer as well, Judy. Yep, right. because they'll be, they'll be uh, they're already in school, so that one, that part will work out nicely. We can just, they'll be here as summer school is going on. Awesome. And they'll be able to access any of the counselors for any, for any issues. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, did, I think we'll have a social worker as well uh, as the concept right. during the summer program. The transition for everybody. I was just here today just hearing people say that they're still afraid to leave their homes. And, and you know, I thought, you know, this is a transition for everybody. Travis, how are we letting the families know that, that, is, that we're having a social worker and counselor? So, yeah, so the contact for middle and high school students will be going out soon. Um, so I'll include that in the letter. Um, so the seventh and eighth graders will be who are, are invited as they did for the fifth and sixth graders, we'll be sending that contact out in the next week. And then the high schoolers, the first week of June, once we have a good sense of who could use the credit recovery or who would like skill development. So I've had our school counselors give me some feedback on some students they think could use skill development. So we'll send that out in the first week of June. Uh, just as like a, uh, not firmly, you're gonna need to have summer school, but it, it looks likely that you may be in a situation where in order to earn this credit, you'll need summer school. Please join us either for scale or for credit recovery, and this is what our staff will look like for the program. I would suggest we move on to the um, Yes, so we're going to be at nine, and we have the counseling center update, so I want to make sure we have time to get that all in. Is that right, folks? Yep, yep. you're going to be up here. comments from some school at all? No, we'll see. Good.
that's not why we're here tonight, but I want to take advantage of So we, um, it seems like yesterday, but it was probably a year and a half ago um, that we sat down with the few board members and talked about uh, revising our, our college and career planning support for high school. And, and the, the timing was perfect because um, Sarah and I were talking about uh, making improvements. Uh, the board was, was curious about the conversation as well. And, and it was meant to be uh, that, that we um, can share this plan with you. What was it meant to be? It wasn't was supposed to start this year. And uh, we're, we're looking at implementing these things uh, starting in September. Uh, so what you're going to see in her presentation is a combination of what we have done and then what we will be doing for those improvements as we support our students. And, and this, uh, quite honestly, evolves as our students um, evolve and, and, and our demographics evolve uh, at East Aurora High School. So um, I'd anticipate us coming back and presenting this in a few years as we're addressing the ever-changing uh, when it comes to college and career preparation for East Aurora High School students. So um, Sarah's done a wonderful job in, in, in uh, uh, bringing uh, what could be a, a couple hour presentation into, into maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to you hearing what she has planned. Well, thank you. I'd just first like to start by welcoming Sarah and um, saying thank you very much for your Approval of my recommendation for tenure. Um, it means an awful lot to me, and it's such a privilege to be a part of the team here at East Aurora School District. Um, I can't tell you how happy I am to go to school every day and work with my colleagues and work with families and students. And I just count it as a privilege, and I just thank you for your support. I thank you too for the hard work that you do, and just sitting here and listening tonight. Um, I can see that you're really invested and your heart is in everything and all the decisions that you make. So I appreciate that. That makes our job a whole lot easier. And thank you to Mr. Roberts for your kind words. Um, you take every day as it comes and you meet everybody where they're at. So that's what we're about. All right. So tonight I would just like to briefly share with you some about our college and our career programming as well as Sometimes we refer to it as post high school planning. Um, as Mr. Roberts said, we're going to just briefly talk about what we're currently doing and then share with you some of the things that we would like to do in the future. We do recognize that there is a need for more classroom engagement with our students, some more small group environments that we would like to um, start participating in, which also aligns with our comprehensive guidance program. And we do want to make sure that we are meeting all the needs of the students. So we're pleased to hear that um, they're considering Maya Learning, and that's the program that Mr. Roberts was referring to that we had a session on. Um, I can't say enough about the program, and I can't remember all the details of it because it was quite a while ago, but I just remember sitting there and thinking, wow, this is an outstanding program that could really improve our working relationship with our students and our families and help there to be a little bit more cohesion between so we do thank you very much for your consideration of that program. Um, it is a tool that we can use and it has a platform that will help all of our students uh, as we provide them support. So I'm just going to start out with going through each grade level and kind of give an overview of that and then also talk about how we hope to expand on in the coming years. So there is a little bit of overlap, I know. Some of what we do is similar in each school here. Um, we go in a little bit of a different direction or maybe just a little bit um, more in depth. So I apologize if there's going to be some redundancy with some of that. Um, but we'll start with our freshmen and they come to us a little bit shy and maybe a little timid or scared and unsure about what is going to happen. So our initial contact with them is really just about relationship building, getting to know them and finding out you know, what makes them tick, what doesn't make them tick what's not working so well in their lives. So just building that strong relationship. Uh, we also encourage them to try to get involved in activities. We've 
talk to them about the one shot at high school. So you might want to take advantage of all of the wonderful opportunities available to you while you're here so you don't look back and have regrets about not getting involved in some things. Um, we'd like to start our career conversation in really just more general terms rather than overwhelming a student initially with what are you going to do and they get enough of that. And it's a very intimidating question for kiddos and you don't ever want them to feel stressed and overwhelmed by that. So we start this conversation gently and we just encourage them as they go along and also encourage those students too who maybe really are not unsure or undecided, but that's really okay. Um, so we're, what I like to do with the students in that case, and especially when we start with the freshmen, is just have them consider, you know, be more mindful about what they're doing, the activities they choose, the things that they are engaged in, the people that they meet, and just really kind of do a self-assessment, stop and pause and say, what is it that I'm really liking about this activity? And why is that that I'm enjoying it? And then the converse of that too, if they're experiencing some negative feelings about what they're doing, you know, why is that? So that will help them to have some more personal insight and some growth as they go through and start just you know, making those self discoveries. Uh, we also, of course, want to talk with the kids about their academics and talking about, especially the freshman level, why uh, academics are important, not just when you start, but all the way through, um, and that the choices they're making now can have consequences later. So, making sure that each year they're doing the best that they possibly can. Uh, we also understand sometimes kids have little bumps in the road, and we will work through that with them. And understand that that's not something that's going to define the rest of their life should something like that happen to them. Um, obviously we've, we've reviewed the graduation requirements with them and that's something that we do every single year. Um, funny, I always ask the kids, do you know how many credits you need for graduation? And even as juniors and seniors, sometimes they're still like, nope. <laughs> so, um, we'll do that every single year. I tell them you're going to get really sick and tired of hearing me um, go over all of this stuff, but it's really important for us to teach you. So we just want to make sure that we're having all of those conversations around the graduation requirements. So we do meet with students both in large groups um, to do a lot of our presentation now um, and disseminating information to students about scheduling and this career and academics information. Um, and then we do always come back and sit down and meet with each of the students individually to have a more personal one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with them about that. Um, and certainly we encourage parent involvement in that, should that be something that parents and students want. So we just um, want to make sure that we include everyone that could want to be a part of that. Um, Part of the graduation requirements is the community service that we go over. And I guess I just wanted to mention at least this year, the seniors did something a little bit different that I heard very positive feedback from them um, doing the you know, group wide community service. And they really, really liked that. So I don't know if that's something that can be worked in in the future, but it was a big success and it would be wonderful if that would be something that could be ongoing. So, we also like to talk about, um, I guess, of students' strengths and weaknesses that plays into some of their potential options for careers, um, and then talk briefly about areas that they would be interested in possibly some point in time. So, um, our four-year plan, that incorporates the academic piece of things, so that is tracking all the courses that the students are taking. And meeting those graduation requirements, but it also includes some the career piece, which would be um, talking about their interests outside of school. So they can again do that self-discovery. Um, we talk about the subjects that the kids are enjoying in school. And we also talk about like the activities that they're engaged in as far as sports, you know, clubs. Maybe some of the students are getting involved in um, musical events if they are doing any kind of a job. So Usually the freshmen are like, no, I'm not working yet, but there are several that do want to care, maybe help out babysitting siblings or neighbors. So we like to encourage them with that. So for the future, we would really like to get into the classroom setting, a much more small group to work with students. Um, now my learning does have an interest inventory, and what's really nice about my learning is they can create a portfolio. So this information that they start in their freshman year we can build on from year to year. So we would start with 
that interest inventory and then have them do some kind of a classroom lesson um, where they are doing some searching about the different careers and why that might be a good fit for them and what appeals to them about that particular field. Um, New York State has the uh, career plan and my learning does link with all of that. So all of that would be online. So parents could have easy access to it. Right now we're keeping track of all this stuff on paper and then we make copies and mail it home. Um, so we would be able to eliminate some of that. That the students and parents have easy access to it. So our sophomores, um, we do continue to encourage students to be involved and suggest that students maybe focus their activities and have some consistency in doing really well, maybe a smaller number of items with their sports and clubs and other activities that they want to participate in. So it becomes a little bit more meaningful down in the long run. Um, we connect with our sophomores around the CTE programming. Um, he comes over and does a really nice presentation for us. And then we take kids who are interested on a tour where they have the opportunity to be able to um, go into a couple of the different programs that are over there and decide if that's something that would work well for them. And then again, you can meet in that large group setting again to be able to do the uh, scheduling and course review for that current school year. And then we sit down individually and go over that and do the review for your plan. So on the future plans, we would like to continue that um, career searching using the interest inventory results from the previous year. If they feel like they want to retry it and do that again, they're welcome to do that. Um, but have them identify and research some more specific uh, careers. And then they could look at like the training that is needed, whether that's um, certification in a trade or whether that's post high school education at a college. They would also be able to research potential income, job values, um, skills that are associated with those different careers. And then another important piece is job outlook that we always like students to be aware of as they're thinking about future careers. And again, that would update in a student portfolio. So as you all know, the junior year is a pretty big year. So we start out, um, we want the students to have information about the PSAT and the ASVAP. Um, and when we have that conversation, it's an easy way to work into um, conversations about the SAT and the ACT and the importance of taking those. So we will do that in a large group presentation initially. Um, we also do our post high school planning presentation, both to students and to parents. Um, this year we did it um, as a video, so I think that might be up on the website, I'm not sure. But. So that presentation is there. Um, we also have opportunities for students to take a look at colleges local through our Western New York College Consortium. They actually come to the high school and the students have opportunity to visit there. Um, but the Buffalo National College Fair is a great opportunity for students to be able to see colleges from all across, across the country. There are some international colleges there as well, um, as well as military and some trade fields. And parents can have the opportunity to go down if they have a slide um, in the evening and participate in that with your student. It's important for kids to be able to have exposure to college reps from across the nation because I feel strongly that students should not only be applying to local schools, but that they should also be planning and preparing to look for schools outside of the area too. So a well-defined list, um, but it has schools that are both local and the way that students will potentially end up applying. So again, we just do that review of the academic progress and the scheduling and updating our four-year plan. Um, we also like to start, or I start a college search with my juniors. Um, currently, we are using College Board um, or Niche. <laughs> so those are two platforms that we use, and they're okay. Most students have um, a College Board account. That's why we go ahead and use that one. It has filters in there, but again, going back to the Maya Learning, they could just pull all this into one place and have a college search built in with very similar filters um, to College Board there as well. So we will do that with kids, and we also have that conversation of what makes that really good list for kids when we're going through all this with them. So. I guess these are websites that we use as well um, with students right now. 
now, and we would probably continue to use some of those, but it's really my learning pulled from their information and data from the um, Bureau of Labor and Statistics in the Onada Mining Occupational Outlook Handbook. So again, going back, it's just nice to have that all in one place. All right, senior year does not cease to be any less busy for our kiddos. Um, so we do a large group presentation at the beginning of the school year to do a review of that college application process. We review the different platforms available to students. We talk about the letters of recommendation. Um, they need to hear from their teachers. Um, each year we do a transcript review with the students. So this one is a little more specific. You know, let's really take a good look at this transcript and make sure that it's correct and that it's um, what you're going to send out to colleges for you. Students work on their college essay um, and obviously some college testing. So when um, students are using Maya Learning, there is an option for them to be able to request letters of recommendation directly from their teachers right through that platform. Um, it's also connected to the common application. Um, so students can use that platform to be able to submit some of their documents through that. Um, we do sit down and meet individually with all the students to go over all of this stuff in greater detail and on a, on a personal level. We provide our financial aid presentation night, um, usually the end of September. Um, the FAFSA goes live on October 1st, so we want parents armed with that information before they do that. Um, and then we also have had a couple of times a college panel where we've invited some college reps to come in and just talk to the students about some of the things that they might be concerned about or worried about as they're going into um, this next phase of their life. The Western New York College Consortium is at the school, so seniors would have the opportunity to be able to revisit those as well if they felt the need for that. Um, we'd like to, I guess I should have highlighted that one, we do scholarships with the kids, but one of the things we'd like to do is also start doing um, more of a classroom program with scholarships and being able to sit down with the kids and show them some of these databases and uh, places that they can search for scholarships. And Mrs. Lamb has done a fantastic job updating our website, um, but it's still sometimes a little confusing and overwhelming to both students and to parents. I always say scholarship searching is a full-time job, so it takes up a lot of work and effort. And so if we could provide them with a little bit more support from that, I think that would be a really good thing. And I believe my learning did have a scholarship search in there as well. And we can link our local scholarship to that platform somehow. So um, I really, I guess, just like the opportunity to be able to get into the classrooms with the students, whether or not we use Maya Learning um, going forward. Are fully intent on being able to do that as part of our goal for next year, spending more time with the kids in that environment and giving them a little bit more support than we have. I think that's a need that we are seeing more so in the last year or two. And so, some of the things that they could do with Maya Learning would include the creation of a portfolio, resume building, that online career uh, program, the interest inventory and the ability to save all of this information and access it parents to have access and to communicate with us so we can communicate with parents through that platform as well. So another little thing we were talking about this week is we'd like to start doing some career showcases. We did a, a career day a few years ago and that was a pretty big undertaking. Um, so we thought maybe we could break that down a little smaller and invited different professionals um, or tradesmen. My husband's actually doing, he's doing construction. So He's doing a, a presentation to a Oak Sea Center this week, actually. But have people come in and you know push them into different departments throughout the year and just reach out to the students and talk to them about what they do and what they all entail. And I hear that possibly we can uh, partner with the chamber for some of that as well. So that would be very exciting to us. Um, so we're excited about these opportunities and we're looking forward to having more time with the students. And, Appreciate your support and your role in all of that. But thank you for your time tonight and questions. Is there anybody with any questions? And if you're a pinch for time, because I know you are a little bit, you can always reach out to any of us, or we're happy to sit down with you at another time as well um, and go through some of this. I know it's a lot. 
Also making sure that we get the message out to parents that many of those private schools can actually be more affordable oh, yeah. than the state schools. Yeah. You know, if, just so that everyone has all of their options. So I'm just wondering how you're going to be addressing that going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's an important piece that sometimes you know right. does get lost in the fray with you know parents looking at numbers and thinking, oh my goodness, what can I do differently? Right. That is part of our conversation with students. Um, and definitely we want to encourage students. My ideal list for students is to have, you know, four to eight schools, um, some local, some away, some public, and some private. We should always have a, a really good mix of both of those on your list. So and that will be addressed though when you do the financial aid night with the parents so that the parents are made aware. Yes, yeah, so I will make a note to add that to our I'm not sure if we're gonna have how many schools this year, we're gonna try to work those details out. But I will make a note of that that we want to have that emphasized in the presentation. And I can tell you at the um believe it was the junior year presentation with Karen, not the big one in the auditorium, but the smaller one in the library. I'm not sure what the name of the event was, but there was that was well covered in there with okay. those options and that that tier structure was really well outlined for Karen. Oh, great. And I just had one other one as well. Um we talked about the PSATs and Potentially, some of the students seeing them as sophomores, as opposed to the junior year, where which they do a lot of schools. Has that been explored more, or where were we? With well, that? this year was just a little well, year, right, so, this year, but right, yes, right. that is definitely something. This coming year, we are hoping to expand a little bit more 
Um, we had, I don't remember the previous year, we had a, a number of sophomores take a visit. No, that's okay. Right now. Yeah, but that was just one of the things we but touched upon. A good opportunity, because you're right, exposure to um, the test is sometimes a, a lot of the battle for many of those students. So the more they can see that and have experience and exposure to that, I, I, I agree with you 100%. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome.
I'm good. Oh, all right. We are moving on to item 14, additional items requiring board action. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education accept the results of the Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 annual election on proposition number one, the budget and the election of board members. Um, the budget passed with a vote of 990 yeses and 456 noes. And we have a, a new board member, Joe Cassidy, who was elected with 1,071 votes. The incumbent member, Kim Daniel, for 951 votes. And the other candidate running, Deb Schmilo, has received 536 votes. And I have a motion to approve the annual election results. So moved by Jessica. Second. Second by Dan Brunson. Discussion. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations. And congratulations, Brian, and my administrative team, and all of my fellow board members on a long year. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried by. May have a motion to uh, our next meeting is Wednesday, June 9th. May have a motion to adjourn. Moved by Jessica, seconded by Kim Daniel. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.